Good morning, and welcome to our online worship service here at Tuscawilla United Methodist Church. My name is Heather Harding, and I'm the pastor here, and I'm just so excited that you've decided to worship with us this morning. So thank you for being here. Today we're talking about serving, and as we've been studying this letter to the Romans from Paul, today we talk about what, what does that mean for the way that we live our lives. And so I hope that today you will pray about how God is calling you to be engaged as a disciple in the life of the church. We have a couple of announcements to begin. This afternoon at 3 o'clock, we're having a continuing conversation on our church's response to the sin of racism. We're not exactly sure where we're going with this, uh, this time together. We've met once, and uh, we'll probably pray together about how God wants us to work in this issue for justice in the world. Uh, but many of us have been reading materials that are anti-racism materials and watching documentaries. And so we hope to pray together and come up with a way of serving in this area. And so if you're interested in that, we would love for you to join us at 3 o'clock this afternoon. The Zoom link will be in the comments of this post, so just look for that. Also, another announcement is that we have many new groups that are beginning. And we're looking for all of our groups to eventually become covenant groups together, where we commit our lives to each other in these small groups. And so there's one for everyone, and we hope that you will join one and find some people that you want to walk with over this next year. So uh, take a look at the newsletter. There's many opportunities. And uh, if you want to have a conversation about which group might be best for you, feel free to send me an email, and we can have a chat about it. So now let us join our hearts together in a time of worship.
Father, allow us to serve others with a joyful heart, never keeping score, always giving, never expecting to receive. Allow us to give of ourselves, ourselves to give of our talents and goods, to give of our time and energy, to give of our heart and soul. Help us understand the needs of others. Never criticizing, never demeaning, never scolding, never condemning. You have been so gracious to us. Always loving, always forgiving, always restoring. Never gloating over our defeats, even when we have been so wrong. Father, keep a condemning spirit far from our hearts and further from our lips. Allow us to serve others as you serve, with gentleness, compassion, and tenderness, never diminishing the worth of another, choosing to extend mercy to the brokenhearted like you and have repeatedly shown it to us. Amen. Good morning, Willa kids, Sparky and Mookie. Is it a good morning? Yes, it is. Well, what if it isn't? Sparky, have you been reading poetry again? Yes, how did you know? I left my Shel Silverstein book out. It sounds like you have been reading What If. Yes, there are all kinds of what ifs in there. What if I get sick? What if the pool is closed? What if I grow green hair? What if the fish don't bite? What if a bull- Sparky! What? You can't worry about all the what ifs. You'll drive yourself crazy. Yeah, I'm even starting to worry about what if God still loves me. Oh, Sparky, you need to read the scripture for today. What does it say? For I am convinced, which means I am very, very sure or certain, that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor heights, nor death, nor closed pools, nor green hair, nor fish biting, not biting, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Oh, that is good to hear. God does still love me. Yes, that means not one single thing will ever make God's love go away. Not for you, not for me, not for anyone. That is some good news. To know that love will be with us no matter what happens or does not happen. Yes. Now let's tell Jesus that we love him by praying. Repeat after me. Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. Help us remember. Help us remember. No matter what ifs we worry about. No matter what ifs we worry about. No matter what comes our way. No matter what comes our way. That your love is with us to stay. That your love is with us to stay. Amen. Amen. Bye, kids. Have a great day. Remember, nothing can get in between Jesus' love for you. Yay for Jesus! Bye, everyone! Please join us in our offertory prayer. God of grace and mercy, we offer our gifts to you this day knowing that it is your love and presence that has sustained us that have sustained us through all our difficult days. We know there have been days when fear and anxiety have gotten the better of us, and we have needed the reminder Paul gave in the epistle to the Romans. If God is for us, then who is against us? Help us to live as Christ calls us, to share what we have and show love and compassion as Christ taught us. We boldly pray in the name of Jesus, our Savior and Redeemer, from Romans 8, 26 to 39. Amen. 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 Good job.
I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Today's reading comes from Romans chapter 8, beginning with verse 26. In the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness, we do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him who have been called according to his purpose. For those who foreknow, he foreknew also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he ju justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who had did, did not spare his son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding to us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger, or sword, as it is written, for your sake we face day, death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, neither present, nor the future, or any powers, neither height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. In the Broadway musical Hamilton, Aaron Burr is portrayed as someone who doesn't have very strong convictions. In some ways, he's like that typical politician that will say whatever he needs to say to get elected. There's a number in the musical where he says, talk less, smile more. Don't let them know what you're against or what you're for. And so this strikes Alexander Hamilton uh, as being not very genuine. And he says to him, if you stand for nothing, Burr, what will you fall for? So they're kind of opposites in that way is that uh, Alexander Hamilton has all of these ideas and he lets everybody know exactly what he's thinking all the time. Eventually, though, Aaron Burr has an, a transformation where he decides that he does want to be in the room where it happens. Over the past few weeks, we've studied this letter from Paul where he describes that we have been freed from sin and death and adopted into God's family. We are heirs to the kingdom of God, but this journey is not without suffering. So as we come to today's passage, it's time to put away all the excuses and finally begin living into our purpose as children of God. In it, we find the fullness of God's dream for us. Instead of standing by and watching other people do this, this is time where Paul is really urging the people to not be afraid and to be involved, to take that step. So let's take a look at what it has for us today. As the passage begins, it says that, you know, sometimes we don't even know how to pray, that we're not sure what to ask for or what to talk to God about. 
But it doesn't matter because the Holy Spirit is with us. That prevenient grace of God is leading us, inspiring us to the way that God is working in every single part of our lives. Sometimes all we can see is the struggle, but God uses all of it, the good, the bad, the ugly, to bring about this glorious kingdom. We know that all things work together for good, for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. So Paul uses this word predestined in here, which has caused countless religious divisions and theological battles over the years. Some believed that predestination was a fixed outcome. But we believe that while God creates each of us in a unique way, like we're all like individual little snowflakes, our purpose is to grow in the likeness of Jesus. This is what God has planned, that each one of us would bring our gifts and our abilities and our personalities and all that we are to this journey. God created this world full of diverse things, so that instead of being like a factory that cranks out the same one of everything, God is more like a master craftsman, making unique works of art in each of us. We are radiant in the world when we become all that God has created us to be. When we go through these times of suffering, we sometimes feel like we're persecuted. We wonder why it can't always be sunshine and rainbows. But Jesus came to show us that in spite of our suffering, God is always with us. God is for us. And nothing can stand in the way of God being there for us. The Message Bible says it like this. So what do you think? With God on our side like this, how can we lose? If God didn't hesitate to put everything on the line for us, embracing our condition and exposing himself to the worst by sending his own son, is there anything else he wouldn't gladly and freely do for us? And who would dare tangle with God by messing with one of God's chosen? Who would dare even point a finger? The one who died for us, who was raised to life for us, is in the presence of God at this very moment, sticking up for us. Do you think anyone is going to be able to drive a wedge between us and Christ's love for us? There is no way. Not trouble, not hard times, not hatred, not hunger, not homelessness, not bullying threats, not backstabbing, not even the worst sins listed in Scripture. And in Scripture it said, they kill us in cold blood because they hate you. We're sitting ducks. They pick us off one by one. None of this phases us because Jesus loves us. I'm absolutely convinced that nothing, nothing, living or dead, angelic or demonic, today or tomorrow, high or low, thinkable or unthinkable, absolutely nothing can get between us and God's love because the way that Jesus, our master, has embraced us. So this is just such a wonderful way to talk about God's covenant with us. God has chosen to be in covenant with us. Another version of this from the NRSV says, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Wow, what a strong commitment to being with us. There's not a single thing that can get in the way of God loving us. But in spite of this strong declaration of God's part of the covenant, we still have free will. And we can still make a decision 
about what kind of covenant partners we want to be. We can decide how we live into this covenant. We can answer Hamilton's challenge to Burr. If you stand for nothing, what will you fall for? What will you give your life to? Is your life as a disciple, is it a part-time job, is it a side hustle, or is it the very center of your life? Is going to church and spending time with God and growing with other Christians at the heart of your being? Or is it just something you dabble in when you have time? John Wesley described people early in this Methodist revival as being warm in their first love, magnifying the Lord, and rejoicing in God their Savior. Now, as we continue to think about how our church can be part of this new revival movement in the world, we have some decisions to make. Will we be devoted disciples of Jesus? Or we, will we be the crowd that they talk about in these passages that we're reading through the Gospels? Will we be the ones who courageously follow the call to join Jesus in his mission to transform the world? Or will we simply cling to the status quo as we know it? One of my goals for this series, House Churches, is to help us find a deeper expression of community together, especially during this time of COVID-19, where we are so isolated from one another. My challenge to you is to find your group, find your core group of people that you can practice covenant with. Deep covenant, like this covenant from God that nothing will separate us from the love of God. So many churches that I've been part of have what I call honeybee ministries. People go from group to group, from activity to activity, but have not sunk into a deep expression of covenant with a small group of people. And John Wesley, when he's describing this, these warm feelings that the people had in this early revival known as Methodism, it's because they engage deeply with each other in their small groups. And he thought that was really critical to the revival of a life in Christ. Some believe that it is supporting the church to be part of every single opportunity that comes along. And we get tired, we get burned out because we're doing too many things. And it keeps us distracted as a church. It keeps us busy, but not deep in covenant together. Belonging to a covenant group engages our mission, and in our church we see that in three very important ways. First of all, it gives us people to belong to. And when we feel this deep sense of belonging, the people in our group are much more than acquaintances. They become like our life partners. They share our deepest joys and our deepest sorrows. A covenant group binds us to the people that are there. We write this covenant together when we begin our groups. We know that the people in that group are not going to simply drop out or flake out on us, but that they will be there when they said they would be there for us. These are people who will be your cheering section when you're celebrating life's high moments. And these will also be people who will hover around you when you are experiencing your darkest times. This will be a group of people that will be there through all of it together. Another thing that's important to us is growing. When we have this assurance of covenant, when we know that the people are going to be there with us, we can be vulnerable with each other about our weaknesses. When we know that this group is going to keep confidentiality, we know that we can share with this group and they're not gonna go blab it to the whole church. We grow together and each of us helps each other. 
And in part of our mission statement, we believe that the outcome of the, of the belonging and the growing is so that we will serve. You know, and as we're reading these Gospels, we're reading the Gospel of Luke now, you see how busy Jesus' ministry is in serving. That they are out there healing and, and freeing people. And the disciples are learning how to do this. So, you know, we may grow and belong really well, but eventually, eventually we're being brought up, we're being trained to go out there and serve. And we find that that's really where our joy is. We may have fear about that, but when we, we dig deep into that and we act courageously, we find great joy in serving. And so when we bond with this group of people, we, we listen together for God's voice about how God is calling this particular group. We pray together and we, we share with each other. And when that group is attuned to how the Holy Spirit is guiding through the prayers and the actions of the people, now we have this built-in team who is ready to go and act on the way that God is calling them to serve together. Now God has given us all different gifts and God delights in seeing us loving each other and sharing these gifts and discovering how God has, a gift, had, has gifted us in such unique ways. When we put all of these gifts together, it is so beautiful to see the opportunity that God creates in each one of us. So here is your challenge for the week. On Friday in our newsletter, we listed some groups that are beginning next month. And we know that many of you are already part of a deep group. This week, we want you to pray about one group that will be your covenant group for the, the foreseeable future, the coming year. And, you know, right now these groups are likely going to meet on Zoom or they're going to call each other on a conference call. Um, but maybe at some point we'll find a way to be together safely. But may, maybe you're being called to a new group. Maybe you looked through all of those groups and you didn't see one that you really felt led towards. So maybe the nudge that you're getting from God is to begin your own group. Maybe you gather four or five or six people around you, and this is the beauty of Zoom meetings, is that they don't even have to live here. These could be people that you grow in covenant with over the next year that live in other places. Maybe the Holy Spirit is nudging you towards certain people or towards certain actions. So I just invite you this week to pray about that and pay attention to how God is calling you to be part of a group. God has great plans for you. The Holy Spirit is guiding you. Jesus is with you. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Let us pray. Gracious God, for too long, many of us have been on the sidelines of this wonderful ministry. We pray that today we would open ourselves to your spirit and that even when we don't know what to pray or how to pray, that you will invite us into this powerful work with some people who will be our covenant partners. Open our eyes to who those people are and give us the courage to reach out and to say, yes, I want to be part of this group. Help guide us to those people that we can share our lives with and that we can serve you with every single thing that we have. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now as we sing this final song, I invite you to turn your eyes upon Jesus. Let's sing together.
Are you weary and troubled? Oh, night so dark that our eyes cannot see. There's light so bright as we look to our Savior. Life more abundant and free. Life more abundant and free. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in His wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strange in the light of His glory and grace. God, our God, You are with us in darkness. Your word, Your life is leading us on. Our hearts can hear You heavenly Father calling us all to Your Son. Calling us all to Your Son. And now hear these words of benediction. As it is a gift that we may serve God, let us now go forth, accepting the ministry to which each one is surely called, rejoicing in the blessing of our Creator God, continually renewed in the life of Jesus, and hoping in the presence of the Spirit. Go in peace. Be led out in joy. Amen.